So, it looks like I'm not going to the forum after all. Uh, I received an email from the U of A's Marketing and Communications and Public Relations staff telling me that they have a policy requiring me to have $3 million insurance if I want to film there. Uh, while that may sound like a lot, it's actually pretty standard for a professional videographer, which I am not. Uh, so I sent this message to the administrative assistant uh, who, who responded to my first email as well as Dr. Gattel and of course the email address on the forum's electronic flyer. Thank you for your response. Since I do not have the requisite insurance to, f to film, I guess I won't be doing that at your forum, and since I can't do any video recording, I guess I won't be showing up. In the past, my behavior at certain feminist events has been mischaracterized by some, and all I had to clear my name was video evidence of my actual behavior. I can only imagine what might be said if it were well known that I wouldn't be having a, a camera at the forum. Uh, still, I am interested in hearing what's said there, as are many of my fellow pro-male partisans. Uh, do you know if it's going to be filmed and put on YouTube? Uh, though Those of us on my side of the fence and those on Dr. Gattel's side may disagree on a great many things. One piece of common ground we may have is that both of us want as many people to hear her message in her own words as possible. I look forward to your reply and either watching or listening to a recording of the speakers at the forum to be held on the 11th. Nick Redding, Men's Rights Edmonton. Now, when I say that I'm worried that people will mischaracterize my behavior, it's not just the fact that it's happened before, but at least one person in the feminist community has already taken the fact that I stated, as loudly as possible, my intentions to not disrupt this forum as a means of, or threat to, disrupt the forum. G.T. Patterson says, Nothing says, I don't intend to disrupt your event, like spamming a number of Facebook pages with the same video. No matter what I do, the fembots are gonna lie about it. Uh, I can set my watch to it, and I've proven that in the past. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going in there without a camera. But about the spamming, uh, a moderator over at A Voice for Reasonable People said that it seems important that his message reaches the followers of this page. Well, it is important to me, because by making it impossible uh, for the, the, the followers of those pages uh, to deny the existence of my announcement, I implemented what is known as the Town Square Effect. And to explain what that is, here's Fiedelbogen. Hey, Fiedelbogen here. <clears throat> Guess what? I am sick as a dog. So I don't sound much like a nightingale, do I? Well, pardon my rusty pipes, but I'm going to make this video anyway. All right, what is the public square effect, you ask? To put it simply, the public square effect is what happens when everybody not only knows something, but knows that everybody knows it. Another name for this is mutual knowledge. Imagine that 100 people are all aware of a particular fact, but none of that 100 people has any idea that anybody else is aware of it. Do you follow me? It's like each of those people has a little secret known only to himself or so he believes. And as long as each one of those people is alone with his little secret in the island universe of his own mind, then this special information might as well be a secret known to only one person for all the effect it would have. You follow me? But what if you gathered all these people together in a special location. 
uh, a public square, for example, and stood up on a podium and loudly proclaimed that private information to the world. Guess what? From there on out, everybody would not only know what they knew, but they would also know that everybody else knew. And better yet, they would know that everybody else knew that everybody else knew. You follow me? And that would change everything. Do you follow me? Nick, back to you. The town square effect, I believe, is what anyone should use when promoting a message they are proud of, a message that they want those who disagree with to hear and respond to. It shows transparency and rigorous participation in an open marketplace of ideas. If you would like to see Dr. Gattel and the rest of the speakers at this forum utilize the town square effect and put the event on YouTube, I invite you to lead by example and mass post this video in a couple of new places on Facebook. First, there's USolve. Uh, a little while ago, the good folks over at USolve decided to treat the students of Grant McEwen College to a poster campaign, wherein tons of little posters were put on Grant Mac's front lawn, asking people if they had various kinds of privilege. You know, male privilege, straight privilege, white privilege, that sort of thing. Uh, now, Grant Mac isn't the same institution as the U of A, but it's an Edmonton-based social justice website, and I know how my view viewers feel about social justice. Uh, there's also a couple of newspapers I'd like to see this. Um, the Edmonton Journal and View Weekly. Uh, I'll be linking to both of their Facebook pages in the low bar. Nick Redding, Men's Rights Edmonton.com.